Good morning, everybody. I hope that you can hear me. Set up in multiple parts. This first part is also the, the way we talk about the broad, the bigger picture, how the story actually works, what's going on, um, how how business uh, work or fits into the world, if you will, and what some of the ethical and social responsibility requirements are, and then we'll talk about all these international international commerce. And one of the reasons that we see so much change in the world, arguably, is because the capitalist free market system um, is the dominant system in the Western, Western economies, beginning to be more in the Eastern economies, and that is starting to impact some of the other uh, economic systems that didn't necessarily follow that same commercial path, but, but are, con are being impacted by it. And so there's some reactions to that. There's all sorts of very interesting things that are happening, and it's really good to have a sense of that because it really does help you understand why things are going on in the world that are going on. It doesn't give you the full answer, but at least you could understand some of the underlying dynamics. So we're going to start with this big picture, and in the first this chapter, but also a couple others, the first several weeks of class, we'll start with that. And as I mentioned in class, then we go into a section where we say what it's like to be inside the company, how you run a company, how you manage a company, uh, what your responsibilities are, all the parts, the different jobs, all of that stuff. And then towards the end of the class, we'll talk about the capital view and how the financial system works. And again, once you learn how to ride that wave, you're on the path of, uh, of being in the top 5% of, uh, of economic benefits because you kind of understand the system. And that's what we'll try to describe a little bit um, towards the end of the term when we get into those kind of things. We'll also touch on accounting and all of that while we're into that system, okay? So let's start with the nature of business. But before we do that, I see there was a question about the books, but is there any other questions that anyone has before we actually dive into, into the content here? Nope? Okay. I asked the question, what is business? Um, on you know the first day, and I had lots of interesting things. Most people, yeah, you have a sense of it, right? You go into stores and and all of that. Uh, commercial activity, trying organizations that put put do put things together and try to get more from what they do than the effort they put into it. Um, satisfying what people need, making them happy. If you're a babysitter, you know, getting someone to make sure that they're happy to call you whenever they're going out on the town. So you get in and you put some time in and you get paid. You know, that's, it's, it's this idea of people can take advantage of other, of individuals, customers, can take advantage of what other people are good at so that they don't have to do it themselves. They're willing to pay for that, assuming they get money from their own activities. And so you start to get this sort of specialization of how, uh, of how things are done and what works and what doesn't work. All good stuff, right? Um, what's traded are products and services, and that's what I can do or I can build more efficiently or effectively than you can, perhaps. Of course, you're doing things more efficiently and effectively than I can. And then we can trade those, and then we both benefit. Because I get what you're good at, and you get what I'm good at, and we both have what someone is good at, as opposed to uh, me trying to do everything, right? Building on that to a local scale, like we said, to people interacting, to a commercial scale in a town or community, to a broad scale in a, in a large economic area like a city or a state, to a nation, and then to the global, pro to the global world. It's, it's organizing all of this activity where people are trying to make li their lives easier and they try to make other people's lives easier in order to earn this kind of living and earn this kind of this input. That whole process, which you can see is a lot more than just going to work every day, uh, that whole process of making all the activities that we human beings do more efficient, more effective, all of that activity is business. That's what we mean when we talk about business. It's all nets out to economic transactions, but it really does involve making the activities of daily life more efficient and effective for everyone by allowing certain people to do work and then trade the outcomes of that work to someone else who can do some or do activities that are different better and that trade develops into an economic system that's what we talk about throughout the course right also if you really step back and think about it 
It means business is a pretty broad topic. It's not, you know, just keeping the books. It's not just showing up in the morning. It's not renting a storefront and starting to sell a clothing line. It has a, a lot to do with how all of us live and touches all of us um, to a great deal, to a great extent. When we talk about products, we also mean services, which means pretty much tangible things that you can sell, like a physical product, the books on the shelf behind me, the computer that we're talking on, or a service, which is like the internet that we're, we're dealing with and we're paying to be able to use this, this transmission of, uh, of video and audio and all of this back and forth. It's not free. You pay for that. You don't necessarily pay for the internet itself, but you pay for the connectivity of having it. Or it's in the service if you're using the library at Adelphi, part of your tuition goes for them to be able to pay for having access to the internet. Um, so those are the kinds of service services as well as what's listed here, like getting a dry cleaning or a doctor or whatever. But then there's also the notion of ideas, generating ideas that help people perform or do better. So even people that are working in more traditional, like scientific or, um, uh, or social science or clinical kind of act, or even art or performance, um, they're providing something that, that people appreciate. And the fact that they're good at it, if you're an artist and you produce, produce art that people appreciate, they're, they can't do that. You can. So it's the same idea of me being able to build a faster smartphone or a better looking, you know, more um, a funner smartphone than you. If I can also produce a nicer song or musical or a um, uh, produce a, 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 an artwork or a dance number better than you can, you enjoy that. You're willing to pay for it, right? So there's commerce associated with providing ideas. But... But in business also, just being more efficient, being better, doing better strategy, someone that can be an accountant and do accounting services for someone, these are the more mundane ideas, but just pretty much anything where somebody is able to take advantage of their talents in order to create something, artistic, um, techno technological, um, sports, whatever, uh, they're able to do something that other people appreciate, and there's a, there's commerce associated with with selling that, right? There's a lot of Super Bowl this weekend. There's a lot of uh, discussion around the NFL and the amount of money they make and how they make it and all the players and how they make it and the ads and all of this sort of thing. <clears throat> That's business, right? It's the business that allows people to, these athletes, to follow their their dream, do what they do well, accomplish things and set records and make money and all of this sort of thing, as well as the, uh, the entertainers at halftime and the like. It allows them to do all of that. So the underlying, this underlying sort of fabric that hooks all of this together and allows us to do our, our own thing and be paid for it um, is really what's going on when we talk about this whole notion of business and what we're trying to accomplish. This is the, the equation, straightforward and simple equation that makes us think, makes us realize why this whole process works and why it continues to work. It has to do with people valuing what other people can do. The goal is to earn a profit. Sometimes we think a profit is just making money, whatever. What a profit really means, though, interestingly enough, is the ability for someone else to find more value in what you do than it costs you to make that happen, right? In other words, I'm able, if I'm the producer, to create something that didn't cost me that much, but the person who wants it, it has a high, puts a high value on it, and so they're willing to pay for it more. Very simple concept, but when you realize that that difference, because I'm different than you, and you're different than me, and Tom Brady is different than your average guy in the street, right? He has something that doesn't, even though he works out a lot and practices a lot and whatever, 
He's able to provide something that we're all just amazed at, for example, and willing to pay for via all these various channels that develop over the years. That's the equation, that's the profit, right, that he makes and other people in this infrastructure make have this profit. And it comes from this fact, the simple fact that he's got things and he can do things that other people can't do, and but they, we value. He can do them, we can't do them as well, but we value them, right? And that's this notion of you sell something for $10, but it only costs you $8 to make, and that creates a $2, $2 of profit. All right, this is like so basic when you look at it on a PowerPoint. Yeah, right, I'm willing to pay $10. It costs $8 to make it. That's $2 of profit. Very simplistic, right? It's almost like, why is he spending so much time talking about this? This is so obvious. It's obvious, but it's also extremely powerful when you think about it, really, because you're making something out of nothing. It's the secret sauce, right? This difference between what the buyer is willing to pay and what it costs you to do it is $2 made from nothing. Accept that difference, right? If you really think about it. Something else to consider with this simple equation is it costs you $8 to make and you make $2 in profit. So what's your return on that investment? Normally people say, okay, ten, two dollars $2 out of 10, that's 20% profit. That is 20% profit on your revenue. But what's the return on the actual costs that you have? In that case, it's 25%, right? Two out of eight, one-fourth, 25%. So it costs me $8, and of that 8, I do something. It takes me a period of time, maybe it takes me a month to make it for $8. And then at the end of that month, though, I get $10. So I've made $2 for, every, for this $8 every month, right? That's a 25% return over the time it takes me to, to, um, to, to, to expend that, for, that 8 that eight dollars and even if that takes me a year to do that eight dollars I still have made 25 percent return on that on that money annual return on a year now remember when you go to the bank and you put money in a bank account you get maybe one or two percent interest one or two percent this is 25 percent interest okay did I have a question I thought it popped up okay that's really when you really think about it, that's what that huge return on being able to innovate and create something that people want is what allows business to start to generate value in the economy that then can, can fund building a business. You could take that $2 and you could buy an office building or you could hire new people and you could do this more and more and greater and greater. And that rolls over that return, that continuing compounding of return is what drives the value of the business up and you can borrow money to do that so you can borrow money at say 12 percent interest rate that's a very high rate but you might have to pay that but you're making 25 right if it's an annual thing so you could afford to pay 12 percent you know so that gen flows through the whole economy but what you're really doing here is making taking advantage of being able to do something well better than others and they value it and so they're willing to trade more for that and it is amazing when you think about it that all these pieces come together and actually work, right? All these businesses, you walk through the mall and you see all this activity. All of it is from these very small items where somebody makes something better than somebody else, that makes something efficiently for a lower cost than what somebody values it for. And they're willing to give someone more than it's worth in order to create the business, in order to get, get, their, get access to it. If I can digress for a second, we had uh, when I was I was working for AT and T, and we were building uh, actually noise cancellation canceling headphones. Um, noise cancellation cancellation headphones we were making. This was back in the 1990s um, with technology that was developed at AT and T from uh, actually from submarines. But the um, one of the people that was there was also consulting, and we were paying him at a pretty good rate. For, uh, within our organization, um, and he 
he, we were paying him a pretty good rate, but he was billing at a lower rate than we were paying him. You know, and it was like I was the CFO of that organization. It's like you can't be doing this. This is the reverse of what we're trying to accomplish. It's, it seems pretty simplistic. His argument was, well, we have money coming in the door. Yeah, but more is going out when you're doing that. So th when the opposite is the case, when more is coming in than going out, it's a, you know, it's a money machine, literally a money machine. Okay. Um, uh, Matt, the, uh, the difference between business cost to make minus profit and economics Economics is really understanding the dynamics of how firms work and how the general economy works, which is the same, um, which is the uh, uh, kind of putting together all of these individual transactions. The, the sale, supply, demand, the pricing and all that, that is also um, part of economics. Economics is the study of how all of this works and how the pieces um, of, of a firm come together and how production creates, how production and efficiency and productivity uh, generate economic returns. Sort of the theory of how the math and all that works is economics. Actually doing it, the kinds of processes you use, the kinds of jobs and all of that is business. It's sort of applied economics. Business is kind of applied economics. Okay. Um, which is the point that you would like me to um, do again? The part about some you're asking me to explain the second point with a different example. Could you ex tell me what that point is? Okay. I've got a couple people typing, so get them. I get to have another sip of coffee. All right. Well, let me let's see. How does earning a profit contribute to employment? Okay. Um, when a firm is making this kind of a, of a sale, that is, they're making ten dollars and it costs them eight dollars to make it, right? Met much of that eight dollars in many organizations is used to pay people. So if you have a person that's making $8 an hour and every hour they produce something that is worth $10, that you can sell it for $10, you're making a profit on that person's work of $2 for every hour they're making it. So you're making, in that, if that was the only cost, there are others, but if that was the only cost, you'd be making 25% return on paying that particular employee. As long as there's people out there, customers, that are willing to pay $10 for these things that you know how to make and someone is making for you, right? you want to go and hire more people that can do that. So if, if you got, say you've got 10 people waiting in a line, but you can only make six of these things because of the number of employees you have, you're making money on every one. You just don't have enough of them. So you have to hire more people in order for you to make more of these things for eight dollars a pop and then you get because you're making more of them you continue to earn income but you are limited to how many you could make because of what we talked about on Wednesday there's only so many hours in a day and so many and you need people that spend those hours doing that and so you can only make so many even though theoretically you can continue to make money as long as there's demand for your product you just don't have enough of them so that drives employment because as long as you're making a profit, you want to hire more people in order to make more of these things because every time you sell one, you make $2 worth of profit. So you make as many as you can. We'll get to this later, but as the supply goes up, and this is also the economics point, as the supply goes up, the demand for them tends to go down. That is, the, the price that people are willing to pay because they know there's extras out there, right? So you have that situation where the price, the ten dollars, won't necessarily be be stable if you're if you're creating huge amounts of these things. Okay, that's what that's what I was trying to get at. Um, in the case of a business being a sole proprietorship, sole proprietors also hire employees. So you might 
if you are as an if you're a sole proprietor and you're doing something and it costs you eight dollars to do it and you're and people will pay you ten dollars if you can hire somebody that can also do it for eight dollars and it's the same exact product then you can hire somebody and do twice as much business still getting the same return so it's the same basic principle okay I'm not sure that answers your question but um, but that's that's the, the the general idea of this is that because you have knowledge and skills and re and access to resources that allows you to make something for eight dollars, and you can only, you can only make so many, but you should make it in dollars. As long as people will pay ten dollars for them, you make two dollars on every one of them, and you can keep making more and more and more. So you hire more and more people, right, to do that. There is a feedback though, because as you hire more and more, the supply goes up, and you might not be able to get ten dollars for every one of them anymore. So that's the basic um, idea behind this. Okay, I hope that answers. Let me continue, and then I'll answer your question, Matt, too, when we come back to it. Um, so the idea about the, um, the the making the profit, adding to the economy, is that as people then make money because they're making these things for you for eight dollars, they have wages not necessarily all of the eight dollars but they have wages so they then can go buy things that other people are making that they can't make you know like they can pay somebody to cut their grass for example because they don't have time to do it anymore because they're working so many hours making these things that they can sell for more so they can pay somebody else and so that's how it can drive um, continual uh, or being reinvested and that's what's called consumer demand and that's what drives a good portion of the economy is the fact that people make this money, they make these wages because they're making something for other people that's being sold for a profit, but they're also getting paid for their time. Now they have money, they want things, they're willing to pay more than it costs other people to make them. So that company makes a profit. That gets reinvested in the economy. And so on and on it goes. And so that's what, um, that's how they, they, the, the underlying driver of not just business, but the entire economy relates to that that particular that particular um, efficiency that's wrought by people that are good at something making it for less than you or I would be able to do it for, and so therefore we're willing to pay them for that. They then get that profit and they can reinvest it to create more of them, right? So there's this feedback cycle, this building on top of each other, on, on top of itself. It starts to take off. It happens in every business, and you start to have more employment. That's the driver of the economy. Remember, government takes taxes. Other businesses come off of that, and it sort of drives everything, really, that we do. And that's one of the reasons that business is such an important area to study. Um, I thought we'd get through more of this this morning. I only have about 10 minutes left, so just um, talk about a few more items, um, and then we'll catch up again on Monday. Um, Nonprofits, they really do the same thing, only they don't have a profit. They don't take a profit for the owners, but instead, any money that they make in this, this $2 is used for some sort of a service or something like that. Um, that they can then offer to people that are in need, whoever their mission is, is uh, related to. Um, I was uh, on the board of the Goodwill Industries for a number of years, and we're having the CEO of Goodwill come to talk to my business policy and strategy class uh, later in the term. Um, but they, of course, run um, donated goods retail stores where you can buy clothes and other things. And then all of that goes into providing employment services like resume writing services and job skills training and all of that for, for people in the community to help them get jobs. They do the same sorts of management skills. They sell their donated goods sales for a putative profit. It's not technically a profit, but they make more from coming in the door than it costs them to do it, and that incremental is used to fund things to help the community going forward. Well, they, they, they make, the only reason I say they don't make a profit, Matt, is that the money that they make that's in excess of their costs, instead of it being given to the owners so that the owners increase their value of their investment, that money still accrues because if you sell donated goods 
might only cost you a dollar to, to process it and get it back on the shelf and you sell it for two dollars, a shirt or something, a t-shirt, that extra dollar is profit essentially. We call it uh, earnings before mission services at Goodwill. That dollar is available to pay employees and everything, but it's also available to provide the service that they offer the community, which in their case is uh, employment training. So they'll come in and they'll have a job skills training. Uh, you know, they might teach you teach people how to how to um, do Microsoft Word or something like that, and they offer that service to the community that they're in in order to help people get jobs. So that's how they survive. They still make as much money as they possibly can. Okay, so nonprofits operate with the same basic ideas. It's just that the the notion of accounting profit, which is really what goes to the owner is different in the nonprofit sector. And there's, uh, there's some other nuances, which if there's questions, we can talk about them at some point going forward. Which gets me to the point about who the stakeholders are. When you, you'll hear the term, your stakeholders, right? Pick any business, Apple, uh, Adelphi University, nonprofit, uh, Goodwill Industries I was describing, um, some retail store like H&M. Um, who are their stakeholders? It's anybody that has any sort of interest in the fact that the, that the business succeeds. Generally, you would say that would be your customers because they like what you have, right? Adelphi, people like to come to Adelphi. They're learning things. Um, H&M, customers like the clothing that's there. They'd miss them if they weren't around. There's other stores, but none just like them. Um, the employees, of course, are stakeholders because they get to come to work and they get to get paid and they probably enjoy their work and their environment, but they also get their paychecks so they can go off and have dinner and all that sort of thing. Um, investors, in the case of a profit-making company, which is primarily our focus, uh, they make money because they give the company money. Remember, they give the company, say, uh, say $100,000. That company uses that to make all those things for 8 bucks a piece. And then... They're selling them for 10 bucks a piece, so they make that profit of 10% or, I'm sorry, 25%, but it, on the revenue, of it's 20%. Remember, on the cost, it's 25 in that case, 25% of 8, but it's 20% of 10, which is the revenue. So when they, you talk accounting about, about profit, it's of the revenue. So it's 20% of the revenue. And that then goes as returns to the owners, the profits. It stays in the business unless it's given as a dividend um, if it's a large company. But if it's uh, a regular corporation, if it's a sole proprietorship or whatever, that goes to the owners. It's essentially what the owner gets. So the owners are investors or owners are also stakeholders, but also the government. Like whenever you have good businesses in your area, there's good employment, people are happy, they have good jobs, they can pay their taxes. So government and government regulators are also very much stakeholders in business success. Having, a, having good businesses in the area is good for the community because it drives employment, it drives standard of living and wages and all of that sort of thing. So it helps the community as well and it helps society as well. So all of these are your stakeholders that, um, that benefit or make use of or care how well a particular company does and how they do business. To continue this whole idea of profitability, you have to continue to be able to create these things for eight bucks that have the quality that people are willing to pay for. In order to do that, you have to operate efficiently, and you have to operate within this these this stakeholder community so that they don't you don't cause more problems for the community than you actually give them benefit. You know, you, one come the, the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico a few years back is an example of that where. There were lots of problems, and it cost British Petroleum BP uh, dearly um, in terms of financial uh, in financial um, resources, but also reputation whenever they had to do the cleanup and the like. All right, so these are the stakeholders that um, that you we talk about when we talk about business. So all of them are important, and you can see the impact that business has not just on you with, because it's your job, or even the owner because they're making money, but also the other groups, like how it helps fund government programs, how it helps get with the community in terms of keeping their standard of living up because there's activity and things to buy, but also jobs, um, and then also just generally how that spreads into a, into a society that's healthy and, um, and doing very well. 
Um, I think I'm going to stop there because we can go into some additional discussion next, and I can start with that.